from the station working for you. This is WRTV News at 11, streaming now. Plans to impeach President Trump for a second time are set to move forward this week. Thanks for joining us at 11. I'm Mark Mullins. And I'm Amanda Starantino. ABC's Elizabeth Schulze has the latest on the Capitol attack fallout and warnings over new threats. As new and disturbing images of the attack on the nation's capital come to light, the House is moving forward with an effort to impeach President Trump for the second time. More than 200 House Democrats introducing a single article of impeachment, charging the president with incitement of insurrection for inciting violence against the government of the United States. A majority of the House's 435 members would need to vote to impeach the president. Democrats say that vote could happen as soon as Wednesday, arguing the president must be held accountable. We came close to half of the House nearly dying on Wednesday. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi is giving Vice President Mike Pence 24 hours to invoke the 25th Amendment and strip the president of his powers. A senior administration official tells ABC News President Trump and the vice president met today, the first time since last week's riot, and had a good conversation. One prominent freshman Republican who voted to object to the Electoral College results in Congress and attended the president's rally Wednesday now says it was a major mistake for the president to tell the crowd to head to the Capitol. He never should have directed that crowd towards the Capitol building um, because they, you know, just the, the there was a bad outcome was destined at that point. FBI field officers in all 50 states are now combing through videos and images along with some 45,000 tips to track down the rioters. And federal authorities warned there could be more threats ahead. An FBI bulletin alerting law enforcement across the U.S. that armed protests are being planned at all 50 state capitals through Inauguration Day. Definitely. The mayor of D.C. requesting additional security for President-elect Biden's inauguration. Uh, am I scared? For, if I'm scared of anything, it's for our democracy um, because we have a very uh, extreme factions in that country uh, that are armed and dangerous. President-elect Joe Biden says he spoke with lawmakers today about how to move forward with impeachment at the same time as the confirmation hearings for his cabinet. Elizabeth Schulze, ABC News, Washington. And the FBI shared a statement with WRTV in response to the reports of protests at all 50 state capitals saying, quote, while our standard practice is to not comment on specific intelligence products, the FBI is supporting our state, local, and federal law enforcement partners with maintaining public safety in the communities we serve. The statement goes on to say, our focus is not on peaceful protesters, but on those threatening their safety and the safety of other citizens with violence and destruction of property. Now to the latest on the pandemic. Today, the State Department of Health announced a more contagious strain of the virus that causes COVID-19 is confirmed here in Indiana. WRTV's Cornelius Hawker spoke with an IU professor who oversees COVID-19 testing on campus about what this means for you and your family. With the new strain of coronavirus first identified in England, now in Indiana, health officials and those in the science community say it's more important than ever to be realistic about how long we'll continue dealing with this virus. Realistically, we're going to have some coronavirus, some SARS coronavirus with us for a long time. It won't be COVID-19, it'll be COVID-20 or COVID-2021. Dr. Michael Hahn is the director of the COVID-19 surveillance lab at Indiana University, in charge of the asymptomatic testing that's being done at the school. He tells me this new variant makes it even more important to continue wearing your masks and social distancing. You are more likely to pass those on than other variants, which is the dangerous part. So they don't appear to make you sicker, but uh, you will get more people sick before you know it. Eight changes to the critical spike protein, which allows this virus to enter the cell, is why this new variant is more contagious. A preliminary study shows Pfizer's COVID-19 vaccine can protect against the new variants of coronavirus, which hammers home the importance of getting the vaccine when it's made available to you. Dr. Hahn predicts it'll be just like getting your yearly flu shot, helping your community as a whole stop the spread of coronavirus. Luckily, this uh, coronavirus evolves much less rapidly than the flu, so we probably won't need to update these vaccines quite as often, but I, I think we're gonna have something like it with us for a very long time. Working for you, Cornelius Hawker, WRTV. 
Well, here in Indiana, the vaccine is still only available to health care workers, first responders, and those who are 80 and older. A link to schedule an appointment can be found in this story on the WRTV app and at our website at WRTV.com. The Fishers Health Department plans to use a former Marsh grocery store as a mass vaccination site. The vacant building is at 116th and Brook School Road. The public health director and mayor plan to announce more details at 10 tomorrow morning. Look for updates on the WRTV app and the news at noon. And WRTV is working for you, getting answers to questions about potential leftover vaccine doses. Moderna and Pfizer doses must be used within six hours of being opened. Most vials contain about six doses. Leaders at IU Health say in order to prevent waste, their extra doses go to healthcare workers. And the Hamilton County Health Department says it has a standby list of eligible community members to call should there be extra supply that must be used. We have lists of folks from other agencies and healthcare providers that are willing to wait to get the vaccine until they're available or uh, are on the back side of those lists. This is solid gold, right? Every shot is a potential life saved. That's how we treat it. And so we want to make sure we get shots in arms, that we are doing our part to have zero waste. Other local hospitals tell WRTV they have similar procedures in place and no vaccine doses have gone to waste. According to the State Department of Health, nearly 194,000 people in Indiana have received their first dose of the COVID-19 vaccine. Around 23,000 are fully vaccinated. 2,537 COVID patients were being treated in hospitals across Indiana as of yesterday. That number has been trending down for about a week. The Indianapolis City County Council is starting the new year by approving millions of dollars in additional funding to address the many ways that COVID-19 is impacting the community. The $12.9 million measure adopted tonight provides $6 million for direct rental assistance, more than $4 million for services to help people experiencing homelessness, and $300,000 for food assistance. In a release, the council says the bipartisan action will directly help the city's most vulnerable residents while waiting for more help from Congress. As of today, small businesses can start applying for new Paycheck Protection Program loans. The latest COVID relief package includes $284 billion for additional lending to eligible businesses. Businesses can now get a second PPP loan. There's greater flexibility in how the loan may be used and still be fully forgiven. And targeted funds are available. Tonight, I asked the Small Business Administration for more details for business owners. Who is the PPP that opened today and who is it available for? Because it is a little different than what we saw last year. Right. So today we just opened up the first draw PPP. So for those who didn't get a PPP last time, it's opened up today. However, it's not for every lender yet. So it's just for these community financial institutions, which is defined by four groups, a community financial de uh, development institution, a minority depository institution, a certified development corporation or a microloan intermediary. So it's very limited. The reason why is because those groups are targeting the underserved market, which is we're trying to make sure that we hit those first so we can make sure that the smallest of businesses have the opportunity. There's actually money set aside for those intermediaries to be able to lend money. And this coming Wednesday, the second draw PPP loans will be open as well. But again, it is just for those using a CFI, a community financial institution, not for all lenders. All lenders will be opened up later. The Small Business Administration has not announced the date yet. But Stacy Pointer with the SBA did assure me that it will be coming soon. We also discussed round one forgiveness, the delay some businesses might be seeing with their lender, and other available help from the Small Business Administration. You can find our full interview on my Facebook page and on this story at WRTV.com. A bill proposed in the State House could give Hoosiers another way to travel without getting behind the wheel. But there's a long road ahead to get there. WRTV's Cameron Riddle is working for you to learn more about the proposed Passenger Rail Commission. Indiana is already known as the crossroads of America, but a new bill introduced in the state Senate could be the first step to also making the Hoosier State home to the cross rails of America. We think we need to increase uh, rail passenger service in Indiana because it's uh, 
oftentimes a less money than an airplane. Indiana Senate Bill 9, proposed by Republican Senator Dennis Cruz of Fort Wayne, would establish the Indiana Passenger Railroad Commission, an official government entity with legal authority to lay the groundwork for a passenger rail system that would give Hoosiers another option to get around. We'd like to connect the major cities. It'd be ideal to have Fort Wayne, Indianapolis, and Evansville, then Louisville, Indianapolis, and Chicago to connect you know, our major things. We got the South Shore going across the top for a while already. Northwest Indiana's South Shore line could be the blueprint for future rail expansion across the state. The high-speed electric train connects South Bend to downtown Chicago, a transit system that just received federal and state support to expand. Crew says adding more transit options across the state is key to growth and attracting new jobs. Because yeah, there's a lot of communities that rely on train traffic to get back and forth to work. So if you come to Indiana and we don't have that option as much as they do, then I think that's a detriment for our state in attracting new businesses. A statewide passenger rail system is still several steps away from becoming reality. The bill first has to get a hearing in the state Senate Transportation Committee and much, much further down the line, the support and signature of Indiana Governor Eric Holcomb, who said this when I asked him where he stands on expanding mass transit across Indiana beyond just the roads. I'm all aboard. <laughs> I see it as um, beneficial. Cameron Riddle, WRTV. The Indy Metropolitan Planning Commission organization rather tells WRTV the demand for more mass transit is trending up nationally and getting rail service in Indiana would require regional cooperation between Indiana counties. As Cameron reports, the bill is still far away from becoming reality, but we did ask Indigo for reaction. In a statement, the agency says, quote, we are excited to work with the state on any potential opportunities to expand public transportation options to the community. Kevin. A cold start in the morning market at 24, but we'll take a step forward. 40 degrees for the high. That momentum for a warm-up continues. New and next, we will introduce you to a local performing arts organization that is bringing dance to your living room. The loan officers can translate for you. From the station working for you, this is WRTV News at 11, streaming now. The impact on the pandemic on restaurants, sports venues, and other businesses is well documented. But the devastating effect on the performing arts industry has not gotten as much attention. Tonight, we're putting a longtime dance company in the spotlight and sharing how you can help. Well, I'm originally from Lynchburg, Virginia. I'm from Chicago, so I've lived kind of all over. For jobs. I was a dancer in New York for a very long time. I danced with Martha Graham's dance company. You may not think of Central Indiana as a destination for performers. Even though there are so many incredible theater, dance, music, art, like visual arts groups in our community, Indianapolis just isn't considered to be one of those communities. But Dance Kaleidoscope, a professional dance company in Indianapolis, is just one group that shows the Circle City has a rich creative arts community. The company started in 1972, originally started as an educational way to teach kids what modern dance was about. And gradually over the years, it became more and more professional. David Hochoy has been Dance Kaleidoscope's artistic director for 30 years. Like many organizations, 2020 was arguably the company's most difficult year in its long history. The pandemic forced rehearsal spaces to close for several months. Dancers returned to the studio in August with some safety changes like wearing masks. It was hard the first week. I'll say it was an adjustment, um, but honestly, like, we'll, we'll do this so that we can dance. Paige Robinson has been with the company for about six years. Despite those adjustments, she feels fortunate. I mean, we're incredibly lucky. A lot of companies right now, I mean, especially in New York, they're not rehearsing, they're not performing, they're completely unemployed. So we're really, really lucky. 
Robinson is part of Dance Kaleidoscope's first original performance of the pandemic era called A New Dawn. So this will be the first time that I have choreographed such a long piece by myself. Artistic associate Stuart Coleman had the tough task of choreographing the piece while adhering to COVID-related restrictions. When we came back, there were obviously all of these procedures and protocols that were in place, and it just made that piece that I had planned completely impossible. Um, and so I just had to say, okay, back to square one. That means you won't see things like lifts or other partner movements, but Coleman says that won't take away from the creativity and beauty of the show. One of the rules is people can't touch and people have to wear masks. And if you accept that from the very beginning, then it doesn't become something that's inhibiting you. Another big difference, you will not be able to watch the show in person. Like many performance groups, Dance Kaleidoscope is remaining virtual for now. While those with the company are anxious to get back in front of live audiences, they hope you will support the arts in this new normal. What I love to say to the, to the community is, I know that everybody's going through a very hard time right now. If you can, try to help artists as well, because art makes life worth living. A New Dawn is streaming now through January 24th. For more info about the show and everything Dance Kaleidoscope has to offer, go to WRTV.com and click on this story. Now to the forecast. A warm-up is coming soon, but first we have to get through a cold night and a cold morning. Here's Kevin with a look at your forecast. We're stuck in the 20s here just for the next 12 hours or so, Mark. Then we'll make our move. 40 degrees tomorrow afternoon. That gives us momentum for the two warmest days. Wednesday and Thursday, temperatures into the mid-40s. Won't last all that long as temperatures crash by the end of the work week, Friday into the weekend. So we've had 2.7 inches of snow so far this season. That's it. We're not alone in being starved for snow. Look at Chicago, just five inches of snow in the Windy City. South Bend and Cleveland, because of lake effect snow, have had much more. Minneapolis, 30 inches of snow. Our opportunity for snow showers arrives late Thursday, then Friday into parts of Saturday. Strong low pressure in the Great Lakes will usher in much colder air, and the snow will pinwheel counterclockwise around that area of low pressure and spread some snow showers across the state. At this time, doesn't look like a major system. Keep our eye on it. It's just a sign that it is still winter. We just haven't had much to show for it as far as snow. Well, you can't see a whole lot there. That's the tower cam from the Salesforce Tower. The camera's at about 800 feet. The cloud base is about 600 feet. So the camera's been in the clouds for a while. 23 is the temperature. You can see the rain through Georgia and the Carolinas. Just a trailing edge showing you some snow that was around Nashville, Tennessee tonight. Remember they had the big snows in Texas and then a dusting of snow in Nashville. Thanks to Sarah Webby for that picture. During the day tomorrow, the wind out of the southwest and it kicks up 10 to 20. That will try to bring in the warmer temperatures. You combine that with at least some breaks in the cloud cover, and we should make temperature progress. We were stuck all day today between 23 and 27. Hopefully tomorrow we make that move from the 20s to at most uh, the lower 40s to the south. Wednesday, a little more consistent sunshine. Temperatures a little warmer, 45 for the afternoon high in Indianapolis, just slightly cooler to the north. Thursday, the clouds increase ahead of the weather system that will bring with it the potential for the snow showers as we go into Friday. The snow showers are around. Temperatures over the weekend stay in the low 30s will be dry rather than a Saturday morning snow shower and then 32 or so on Sunday. Mark. Kevin, thank you. March Madness will tip off across central Indiana in about two months. A majority of the tournament will be held in Indianapolis. Downtown Indy Inc. and IMPD want to make sure visitors feel safe while they're here. They say that civilian safety ambassadors and IMPD cadets will be out patrolling. The cadets, the ambassadors rather, do not have police powers, but they have radios to quickly report any disturbances. The president of Downtown Indy Inc. says it's not just about safety, it's also about who's your hospitality they walk uh, the downtown sidewalks they engage with people they're the extra set of eyes and ears for IAPD as well as the hospitality arm so if somebody needs directions or they just want to ask questions about 
what's going on. Uh, these guys are prepped and ready to help respond to that. Downtown Indy Inc. expects around 20,000 visitors in central Indiana for all of the games. That's just team members and their families. Officials hope to find out next month if fans will be allowed. We'll keep you posted. We'll be right back. Bruce.com. into the offseason with several key players entering free agency. WRTV's Brad Brown takes a look at some of the looming questions the team faces in tonight's Sports Extra Spotlight. The disappointment of walking off the field for a final time comes with a desire to already get to work on the next season. And they always, especially because there's no next week, so there's not like you can you know, have some new film, some fresh film to kind of replace that the previous week. So. Um, this is definitely going to be one that's going to kind of linger for a little bit and uh, it's got to just propel you into the offseason. The Colts fell short in Saturday's wildcard game in Buffalo, an abrupt end to an 11 win season. But with no division title and no playoff win to show for it, should 2020 be considered a success? I think we've made a lot of progress. Um, like I said, it's the NFL year to year, man. It's always a new team. and But I think that, you know, they've done a great job of getting the guys in here who are going to be here, um, you know, the staples of, of the team and, you know, hopefully build a new team around it. Obviously, there's going to be new pieces next year, but I really think that we're heading in the right direction. The Colts have a dozen players with significant reps whose contracts have expired. That includes seven who started most of the games this past season. Chief among them, quarterback Phillip Rivers. Head coach Frank Reich says he would like to have Rivers back again. As I sit here today, I, I want everybody back. Um, and I think Phillip still has a lot of good football. I think Jacoby's a great player. And we could go on and on to TY. We can keep going down the list. I, I can't go there right now because it's just too fresh too emotional with these guys. We know the realities of this league is there's change. Rivers was emotional after Saturday's loss. I've never not believed it was the year, but uh, it was a it was a special a special team to be part of. But he said he'd be fine either way, playing an 18th NFL season while turning age 40 or not. I'll be on the sideline somewhere. I know where I'll be on the sideline with the ball cap. Uh, coaching the heck out of a high school football team down in South Alabama. Either way, the message is clear. This team could have the pieces in place to make a big run in 2021. But it will all have to start long before week one gets here. This is the last time we'll have the 2020 Colts. You know, this team, will you know, it won't be here next year. You know, we'll have some moving parts. Yeah, we'll have guys back, but, you know, there'll be, you know, some guys that that will move on and go to other teams and um you know we will never get this opportunity with this team ever again brad brown wrtv sports learn more at inspiresleep.com calendars featuring furry friends are not uncommon but this one has a twist these dogs are not pets they protect and serve with the transportation security administration the tsa Hopes people will use the calendar to learn about one layer of security at airports. You can download it for free at tsa.gov. Kevin, they're pretty cute too. I love that idea. 40 degrees. I think we'll all enjoy a break in the cloud cover at times tomorrow, but still partly to mostly cloudy. Temperatures are, as we mentioned, warmer Wednesday, Thursday, and then the slide down begins. Friday into the weekend, much colder. Maybe some snow showers around on Friday as well. All right, that'll do it for us here on WRTV News at 11. Thanks for being here with us. Catch the GMI crew headed your way at 4.30 tomorrow morning.